Islamic fundamentalism has been defined as a movement of Muslims who think back the earlier times and seek to return to the fundamentals of the religion and live similarly to how the Prophet Muhammad and his companions lived. Islamic fundamentalists favor a literal and originalist interpretation of the primary sources of Islam the Quran and Sunnah, seek to eliminate what they perceive to be corrupting non-Islamic influences from every part of their lives and see Islamic fundamentalism as a pejorative term used by outsiders for Islamic revivalism and Islamic activism. Topic. Definitions and descriptions Definitions vary of what Islamic fundamentalism is and how, if at all, it differs from Islamism or political Islam or Islamic revivalism. The term has been deemed misleading by those who suggest all mainstream Muslims believe in the literal divine origin and perfection of the Quran and so are fundamentalists, and by others as a term used by outsiders to describe perceived trends within Islam. Exemplary figures of Islamic fundamentalism are Sayyid Qutb, Abul Ala Madudi, and Israr Ahmed. The Wahhabi movement and its funding by Saudi Arabia is often described as being responsible for the popularity of contemporary Islamic fundamentalism. Form of Islamism – Graham Fuller describes Islamic fundamentalism not as distinct from Islamism, but as a subset, the most conservative element among Islamists. Its strictest form includes Wahhabism, sometimes also referred to as Salafia. For fundamentalists the law is the most essential component of Islam, leading to an overwhelming emphasis upon jurisprudence, usually narrowly conceived." Author Olivier Roy takes a similar line, describing neo-fundamentalists, i.e. contemporary fundamentalists as more passionate than earlier Islamists in their opposition to the perceived corrupting influence of Western culture. Avoiding Western dress, neckties, laughter, the use of Western forms of salutation, handshakes, applause. Discouraging but not forbidding other activities such as sports, ideally limiting the Muslim public space to the family and the mosque. In this fundamentalists have drifted away from the stand of the Islamists of the 1970s and 80s, such as Abul Allah Madudi who didn't hesitate to attend Hindu ceremonies. Khomeini never proposed the status of dhimmi protected for Iranian Christians or Jews, as provided for in the Sharia. The Armenians in Iran have remained Iranian citizens, are required to perform military service and to pay the same taxes as Muslims, and have the right to vote with separate electoral colleges. Similarly, the Afghan Jamaat, in its statutes, has declared it legal in the eyes of Islam to employ non-Muslims as experts. Umbrella term, another American observer, Robert Pelletro Jr., Assistant Secretary of State for Near Eastern Affairs, believes it the other way around, Islamism being the subset of Muslims, with political goals within the broader fundamentalist revival. American historian Ira Lapidus sees Islamic fundamentalism as an umbrella designation for a very wide variety of movements, some intolerant and exclusivist, some pluralistic, some favorable to science, some anti-scientific, some primarily devotional and some primarily political, some democratic, some authoritarian, some pacific, some violent." Synonym, still another, Martin Kramer, sees little difference between the two terms. To all intents and purposes, Islamic fundamentalism and Islamism have become synonyms in contemporary American usage. Scriptural literalism, according to another academic, Natana J. DeLong Ba, the contemporary use of the term Islamic fundamentalism applies to Muslims who not seek not just to return to the primary sources, but who use a literal interpretation of those sources. Use of ijihad in Islamic law, according to academic John Esposito, one of the most defining features of Islamic fundamentalism is belief in the reopening of the gates of ijihad, independent reasoning, used in reaching a legal decision in Sunni law. Disorder, Dr. Kathleen Taylor, speaking at the Hay Literary Festival, said Islamic fundamentalism may one day be seen in the same way as mental illness and be curable. Differences with Islamism distinctions between fundamentalism and Islamism, or at least pre-1990 Islamism, according to Roy, are in the fields of politics and economics. Islamists often talk of revolution and believe 
that the society will be Islamized only through social and political action, it is necessary to leave the mosque." Fundamentalists are primarily interested in revolution, less interested in "...modernity or by Western models in politics or economics," and less willing to associate with non-Muslims. Sharia. While both Islamists and fundamentalists are committed to implementing Sharia law, Islamists tend to consider it more a project than a corpus." Issue of women. Islamists generally tend to favor the education of women and their participation in social and political life. The Islamist woman militates, studies, and has the right to work, but in a chador. Islamist groups include women's associations. While the fundamentalist preaches for women to return to the home, Islamism believes it is sufficient that the sexes be separated in public. Types Islamic fundamentalism at least among Sunni Muslims traditionally tends to fall into traditionalist and reformist tendencies traditionalists accept the continuity between the founding Islamic texts the Quran and the Sunnah and their commentaries traditionalists take imitation taklid accepting what was said before and refusing to innovate bidda as a Basic principle, they follow one of the great schools of religious jurisprudence Shafi'i, Maliki, Hanafi, Hanbali. Their vision of the sharia is essentially legalistic and used to determine what is religiously right or wrong for enjoining good and forbidding wrong. Traditionalists are sometimes connected to the popular forms of Sufism such as the Barelvi school in Pakistan. Reformist Fundamentalism, in contrast, "...criticizes the tradition, the commentaries, popular religious practices," Maraboutism, the cult of saints, "...deviations, and superstitions." It aims to purify Islam by returning to the Quran and the Sunnah. 18th century examples are Shah Walula Delawi in India and Abdul Wahab in the Arabian Peninsula. This reformism is often "...developed in response to an external threat," such as the influence of Hinduism on Islam. In the late 19th century, Salafia was developed in the Arab countries, marking a phase between fundamentalism and Islamism. Topic: <laughs> Controversy. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Criticism of the term. The term Islamic fundamentalism has been criticized by Bernard Lewis, Khalid Abu Lfadl, Eli Berman, John Esposito, among others. Many have proposed substituting another term, such as «puritanical», «Islamic revivalism», or «activism», and «radical Islam». Lewis, a leading historian of Islam, believes that although «the use of this term is established and must be accepted», it remains unfortunate and can be misleading. Fundamentalist is a Christian term. It seems to have come into use in the early years of last century, and denotes certain Protestant churches and organizations, more particularly those that maintain the literal divine origin and inerrancy of the Bible. In this they oppose the liberal and modernist theologians, who tend to a more critical, historical view of Scripture. Among Muslim theologians there is as yet no such liberal or modernist approach to the Quran, and all Muslims, in their attitude to the text of the Quran, are in principle at least fundamentalists. Where the so-called Muslim fundamentalists differ from other Muslims and indeed from Christian fundamentalists is in their scholasticism and their legalism. They base themselves not only on the Quran, but also on the traditions of the Prophet, and on the corpus of transmitted theological and legal learning. John Esposito has attacked the term for its association with political activism, extremism, fanaticism, terrorism, and anti-Americanism, saying, I prefer to speak of Islamic revivalism and Islamic activism. Khalid Abu Lfadl of UCLA, a critic of those called Islamic fundamentalists, also finds fault with the term because M. Any liberal, progressive, or moderate Muslims would describe themselves as usulis, or fundamentalist, without thinking that this carries a negative connotation. In the Islamic context, it makes much more sense to describe the fanatical reductionism and narrow-minded literalism of some groups as puritanical a term that in the West invokes a particular historical experience. Eli Berman argues that, "...radical Islam." 
is a better term for many post 1920s movements starting with the Muslim Brotherhood, because these movements are seen to practice unprecedented extremism, thus, not qualifying as return to historic fundamentals. Defense In contrast, American author Anthony J. Dennis accepts the widespread usage and relevance of the term and calls Islamic fundamentalism, "...more than a religion today, it is a worldwide revolutionary movement." He notes the intertwining of social, religious and political goals found within the movement and states that Islamic fundamentalism, "...deserves to be seriously studied and debated from a secular perspective as a revolutionary ideology." At least two Muslim academics, Syrian philosopher Sadiq Jalal al-Azm and Egyptian philosopher Hassan Hanafi, have defended the use of the phrase. Surveying the doctrines of the new Islamic movements, al-Azm found them to consist of an immediate return to Islamic basics and fundamentals. It seems to me quite reasonable that calling these Islamic movements fundamentalist and in the strong sense of the term is adequate, accurate, and correct. Hassan Hanafi reached the same conclusion. It is difficult to find a more appropriate term than the one recently used in the West, fundamentalism, to cover the meaning of what we name Islamic awakening or revival. <inaudible> Study In 1988, the University of Chicago, backed by the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, launched the Fundamentalism Project, devoted to researching fundamentalism in the world's major religions, Christianity, Islam, Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism and Confucianism. It defined fundamentalism as approach, or set of strategies, by which beleaguered believers attempt to preserve their distinctive identity as a people or group by a selective retrieval of doctrines, beliefs, and practices from a sacred past." A 2013 study by Wissenschaftszentrums Berlin für Sozialforschung finds that Islamic fundamentalism is widespread among European Muslims with the majority saying religious rules are more important than civil laws and three quarters rejecting religious pluralism within Islam. <inaudible> Origins The modern Islamic fundamentalist movements have their origins in the late 19th century. The Wahhabi movement, an Arabian fundamentalist movement that began in the 18th century, gained traction and spread during the 19th and 20th centuries. During the Cold War following World War II, some NATO governments, particularly those of the United States and the United Kingdom, launched covert and overt campaigns to encourage and strengthen fundamentalist groups in the Middle East and Southern Asia. These groups were seen as a hedge against potential expansion by the Soviet Union, and as a means to prevent the growth of nationalistic movements that were not necessarily favorable toward the interests of the Western nations. By the 1970s, the Islamists had become important allies in supporting governments, such as Egypt, which were friendly to U.S. interests. By the late 1970s, however, some fundamentalist groups had become militaristic leading to threats and changes to existing regimes. The overthrow of the Shah in Iran and rise of the Ayatollah Khomeini was one of the most significant signs of this shift. Subsequently, fundamentalist forces in Algeria caused a civil war, caused a near civil war in Egypt, and caused the downfall of the Soviet occupation in Afghanistan. In many cases the military wings of these groups were supplied with money and arms by the US and UK. Muslim critics of Islamic fundamentalism often draw a parallel between the modern fundamentalist movement and the 7th century Kawaray sect. From their essentially political position, the Karajits developed extreme doctrines that set them apart from both mainstream Sunni and Shia Muslims. The Karajits were particularly noted for adopting a radical approach to takfir, whereby they declared other Muslims to be unbelievers and therefore deemed them worthy of death. Interpretation of texts Islamic fundamentalists, or at least, reformist fundamentalists, believe that Islam is based on the Quran, Hadith and Sunnah and criticize the tradition, the commentaries, popular religious practices marabautism, the cult of saints, deviations, and superstitions. They aim to return to the founding texts. 
Examples of individuals who adhere to this tendency are the 18th century Shah Walula in India and Muhammad ibn Abd al Wahhab in the Arabian Peninsula. This view is commonly associated with Salafism today. Social and political goals As with adherents of other fundamentalist movements, Islamic fundamentalists hold that the problems of the world stem from secular influences. Some scholars of Islam, such as Bassam Tibi, believe that, contrary to their own message, Islamic fundamentalists are not actually traditionalists. He refers to fatwas issued by fundamentalists such as every Muslim who pleads for the suspension of the sharia is an apostate and can be killed. The killing of those apostates cannot be prosecuted under Islamic law because this killing is justified as going beyond, and unsupported by, the Quran. Tibi asserts, the command to slay reasoning Muslims is un-Islamic, an invention of Islamic fundamentalists. <laughs> Conflicts with the secular state Islamic fundamentalism's push for sharia and an Islamic state has come into conflict with conceptions of the secular, democratic state, such as the internationally supported Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Anthony J. Dennis notes that, "...Western and Islamic visions of the state, the individual and society are not only divergent, they are often totally at odds." Among human rights disputed by fundamentalist Muslims are Freedom from religious police Equality issues between men and women Separation of religion and state Freedom of speech Freedom of religion <inaudible> Islamic fundamentalist states The 1979 Islamic Revolution in Iran is seen by some scholars as a success of Islamic fundamentalism. Some scholars argue that Saudi Arabia is also largely governed by fundamentalist principles, see Wahhabi movement, but Johannes J. G. Jansen disagrees, arguing that it is more akin to a traditional Muslim state, where a power separation exists between princes umara, and scholars. Ulama. In contrast, Jansen argues Khomeini came to power advocating a system of Islamic government where the highest authority is the hands of the ulama. See Wilayat al Islamic fundamentalist groups Islamic fundamentalist groups include All India Majlis e Itihad Muslimin, Al Qaeda, Abu Sayyaf, Ansar al Islam, Armed Islamic Group of Algeria, Army of Islam, Boko Haram, Taliban, Egyptian Islamic Jihad, Lashka e Taiba, Jaish e Muhammad, Jama'a Islamiyah, Hamas, Harkat ul Jihad al Islami, Harkat ul Mujahideen, Indian Mujahideen, Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant, Turek i Taliban Pakistan, among many others. The Islamic State Caucasus Emirate Caucasus Emirate is a fundamentalist Islamic terrorist group residing primarily in the North Caucasus of Russia. Created from the remnants of the Chechen Republic of Ichkeria in October 2007, it adheres to an ideology of Salafist Takfiri Jihad that seeks to establish an Islamic caliphate within the North Caucasus and Volga region primarily the republics of Tatarstan and Bashkortostan. Many of their fighters are also present in jihadist battlegrounds such as Syria, Afghanistan, Iraq, and throughout Central Asia. Many plots involving Chechen and other indigenous ethnic groups of the North Caucasus have also been thwarted in Europe over the recent years. Al-Shabaab Al-Shabaab, meaning, the youth, is a Somalia-based cell of the militant Islamist group Al-Qaeda, formally recognized in 2012. Al-Shabaab is designated as a terrorist group by countries including Australia, Canada, Norway, Sweden, the United Kingdom, and the United States. Topic: <inaudible> Boko Haram. Congregation of the People of Tradition for Proselytism and Jihad (Arabic: Jamaat al alzant Ledo Waljad Jamaa al al Sunnah li Dawa wa al Jihad), better known by its Hausa name Boko Haram, pronounced Grave Haram, 
Western Education is Sinful is a jihadist militant organization based in the northeast of Nigeria. It is an Islamist movement which strongly opposes man made laws and westernization. Founded by Muhammad Yusuf in 2001, the organization seeks to establish Sharia law in the country. The group is also known for attacking Christians and bombing mosques and churches. The movement is divided into three factions. In 2011, Boko Haram was responsible for at least 450 killings in Nigeria. It was also reported that they had been responsible for over 620 deaths over the first six months of 2012. Since its founding in 2001, the jihadists have been responsible for between 3,000 and 10,000 deaths. The group became known internationally following sectarian violence in Nigeria in July 2009, which left over 1,000 people dead. They do not have a clear structure or evident chain of command. Moreover, it is still a matter of debate whether Boko Haram has links to terror outfits outside Nigeria and its fighters have frequently clashed with Nigeria's central government. A U.S. commander stated that Boko Haram is likely linked to Al-Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb AQIM, although Professor Paul Lubeck points out that no evidence is presented for any claims of material international support. Ansar Dine Ansar Dine is an Islamist militant group in the country of Mali that wants Sharia law in Mali. It opposes Sufi shrines. Its main support comes from the Ifora tribe of Tuaregs. The group is connected to Al Qaeda in the Islamic Maghreb. It took part in the 2012 Tuareg rebellion. They destroyed the tomb of a Sufi saint, which was a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It managed to take control of northern Mali, and they formed a pact with the MNLA forming the Islamic Republic of Azawad. It is designated a terrorist group by the United States Department of State and the United Nations Security Council. Ansar al-Sharia Human rights controversy Fundamentalist Islamic states and movements have been criticized for their human rights record by international organizations. The acceptance of international law on human rights has been somewhat limited even in Muslim countries that are not seen as fundamentalist. Anne Elizabeth Mayer writes that states with a predominantly Muslim population, even when they adopt laws along European lines, are influenced by Islamic rules and precepts of Sharia, which cause conflict with international law on human rights. According to Mayer, features found in conflict include severe deficiencies in criminal procedure, harsh criminal penalties causing great suffering, discrimination against women and non-Muslims, and prohibition against abandoning the Islamic religion. In 1990, under Saudi leadership, the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, a group representing all Muslim-majority nations, adopted the Cairo Declaration on Human Rights in Islam, which substantially diverges from the 1948 Universal Declaration of Human Rights The Cairo Declaration lacks provisions for democratic principles, protection for religious freedom, freedom of association and freedom of the press, as well as equality in rights and equal protection under the law. Further it stipulates that, "...all the rights and freedoms stipulated in this declaration are subject to the Islamic Sharia." The Cairo Declaration followed years of limited acceptance of the Universal Declaration by predominantly Muslim states. As an example, in 1984, Iran's UN representative, said Raji Khorasani, said the following amid allegations of human rights violations, "...Iran recognized no authority apart from Islamic law." Conventions, declarations and resolutions or decisions of international organizations, which were contrary to Islam, had no validity in the Islamic Republic of Iran. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights, which represented secular understanding of the Judeo-Christian tradition, could not be implemented by Muslims and did not accord with the system of values recognized by the Islamic Republic of Iran, this country would therefore not hesitate to violate its provisions." These departures, both theoretical and practical, have resulted in a multitude of practices and cases criticized by international human rights groups. See Human Rights in Iran, Human Rights in Saudi Arabia, and Taliban Treatment of Women for specific examples. Opinion polling 
In a 2005 Lowy Institute for International Policy poll 57% of Australians indicated they are worried about the rise of Islamic fundamentalism. Amos N. Giora noted that this is equivalent to the number of Australians who perceived American foreign policy as a threat. He further noted that not just Muslim countries have an unfavourable opinion of the United States but a large number of Western countries such as France, Germany, Great Britain, and Spain, and concluded that Australia was not an outlier on this regard. The Lowly Institute claimed that the result raised eyebrows. A New York Times poll found that 33% of Americans think that Muslim Americans were more sympathetic to terrorists than other citizens. Rick Coolsat analyzed this as indicating a high level of distrust directed at the American Muslim community. The Times did this survey during the Park 51 Ground Zero mosque incident. The Times called the findings appalling and also analyzed the data as showing a very high level of distrust of Muslim Americans and robust disapproval of the Park 51 mosque proposal. The New Republic stated that it does not trust the poll carried out by the New York Times and that the figures would be higher than 33%. They further claimed that New York residents are tolerant and if the figures were 33% in New York then, non-New Yorker fellow citizens are far more deeply biased and warped than the Gotham locals. Topic. See also Topic. Notes Topic. References Ahmed, Akbar S., Donan, Hastings Islam, Globalization, and Postmodernity, Google Books. Psychology Press. Appleby, R. Scott Fundamentalisms and Society, Reclaiming the Sciences, the Family, and Education. University of Chicago Press. Cooper, William Wager, U. P. I. Y. U. Challenges of the Muslim World, Present, Future and Past. Emerald Group Publishing. Dreyfus, Robert Devil's Game, How the United States Helped Unleash Fundamentalist Islam. Macmillan. Roy, Olivier the Failure of Political Islam. Harvard University Press. Ariel Francais, Islam Radical et Nouvelle Ordre Imperial, L'Armaton, 2007. Roy, Olivier The Failure of Political Islam. Harvard University Press. Retrieved 2 April 2015. Further reading Sikand, Yoginder Origins and Development of the Tablighi Jama'a 1920 a cross-country comparative study, ISBN 81-250-2298-8 Shepard, William. What is Islamic Fundamentalism? Studies in Religion. Winter 1988. Malik, S.K. The Quranic Concept of War PDF. Himalayan Books. ISBN 81 7002 020 4. Swaroop, Ram. 1982. Understanding Islam through Hadis. Voice of Dharma. ISBN 0 682 49948 X. Trifkovich, Serge. 2006. Defeating Jihad. Regina Orthodox Press, USA. ISBN 1 928653 26X. Phillips, Melanie. 2006. Londonistan: How Britain is Creating a Terror State Within. Encounter Books. ISBN 1-59403-144-4. Topic. External links. Fundamentalist Islam at the Wayback Machine, archived October 27, 2009. Islamic Fundamentalism: A Brief Survey.